Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I do appreciate the opportunity to speak to this resolution because I believe this chamber has a constitutional obligation to check any executive powers that carry with it the force of law. I do appreciate the comments made from, from representatives on both sides of the aisle, and it lends itself to credible debate, debate that is necessary before we take decisions like this. Now, it is in my personal opinion that any legislatively created entity ought not to be abolished simply by executive fiat. However, I do think it is important to note and acknowledge the fact that there is a small window of legislative authority that is granted to the executive department when there are commissions that are created by this legislature that serve under their purview. However, when we acknowledge that, it is also equally important to acknowledge the fact that when that legislative authority is exercised by the executive department, the roles are reversed, and as the legislature, we now have the responsibility to the people we serve to review them. Now, as clearly stated within the resolution that is before us, the main issue with this executive order is the abolishment of the three recently created legislative entities that serve as commissions. Now, these commissions also had years of scrutiny on them during the debate that led to their adoption. These commissions also had hours upon hours of public debate. We are simply, with the passage of this resolution, wanting to uphold the input and the previous action taken by this body that was signed into law by a previous governor. And I want to make note of that because I heard several comments made by former speakers saying we need to put partisanship aside. Let me be very clear and remind you that when these commissions were created, it was done so under a Republican administration. And we are simply seeking to uphold them under a Democratic administration. This resolution is blind to partisanship. This is about doing what we think is right because these commissions require necessary public input from the people that we serve. This requires necessary public oversight from the people that we serve. We are literally talking about giving the people that we serve a voice. That's what these commissions did. These commissions also required additional transparency elements over the executive and over the departments. Now, I also heard that based on a previous election, this must be the will of the people. Let me remind every single person who took an oath to serve in this chamber, we are called the People's Chamber. Every bill that we passed, as well as the bills that created these commissions, begin with the people of the state of Michigan enact. We were the body that went through public debate. We were the body that went through public scrutiny. And that is why we are simply upholding what was already previously passed. It was also mentioned previous comments made by myself earlier in this term. And let me repeat that. As was mentioned, as the Great Lakes state, we need to do more to ensure we have clean drinking water. We need to do more to ensure we're protecting our Great Lakes. I simply do not believe this wide-sweeping executive order in its totality is the best way to do it. In order for our state government to operate, it requires negotiating. I'm asking my colleagues to support this resolution because it, it is the first step in negotiations. I look forward to continuing conversations with our governor on how we can best ensure our Great Lakes are protected and we have clean drinking water. I look forward to bipartisan cooperation because I believe it's a false narrative to say that an executive order undoing what was passed by this legislature without us knowing about it is bipartisanship 
but this body upholding our previous action is not. I think that is a gross mischaracterization of what we are doing here today. I look forward to the governor resubmitting an executive order to this body, and I look forward to continuing negotiations with her, and I encourage my colleagues to vote yes on this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.